I auditioned when I was 18 or 17 um, and then left school, didn't get the part, um, left school, went into, I didn't know what I was going to do, just went into a property degree or something and then a third of the way through the year I got a call when I was living at home still from the casting director of Shorten Street, Marianne Willison, and she said, hello, um, would you like a role on Shorten Street? And I said, yeah, that'd be great, <laughs> um, you know. And then I hung up, I, that was it. She said, okay, well look, you, you, we'll send you the scripts and we'll send you a contract and everything. I didn't have an agent. Um, and, and that duly arrived in the mail. Um, and she rang me sort of about five minutes after we'd had that conversation. She said, we haven't spoken about fees. And I was like, well, I get paid for this? <laughs> so it was great, you know. And they offered me 600 bucks a week, which I thought was a fortune and took it. And that was the start of that. It was a hugely exciting time for me. You know, a young guy at, who was already interested in media, so did media studies at school, was involved in school dramas, and young and, you know, never considered a, a, a career in acting to be paid. And I was entering this world, this exciting, vibrant world full of people I'd seen on TV before, but, I never, you know, didn't know them. And it was huge. It was really exciting. Yeah. A really great character, I have to say. Um, the writers initially just, he was just initially a bad kid on the street um, who, who was in there for a, for a week or two. Um, and then they, I think they liked what I'd done and they decided to get me back um, in a more formal role, changed his name, made him the son of the director. But he, he was a, um, a bad guy with a, a good heart and that's such a great character to play because you've you've got the all the good stuff to play you know you, you really want him to succeed but he just continually fails he's got that you know makes the bad choices i liked that oscar storyline with the the he was the, the the murderer you know the custard with the cc in it and all that stuff or whatever it was yeah um, he was a great guy to act with and, and the story was quite exciting at the time and I don't think it had been done before in quite that way. It was really quite glamorous storyline, um, so I enjoyed that. All the stuff with Claire Chittam was always fun. I mean, she's such a wonderful actress that it was such a, um, an honour to, to work with her. And we had a really good off-screen and on-screen friendship, so it was, it was, that was cool. Um, I, yeah, actually, I'd have to say that would be like the highlight was that whole leaving storyline, with the cops bursting in on the wedding, and because I'd given the writers an uh, indication I wanted to leave, and um, and they'd worked quite hard to formulate a storyline which was really powerful, and and wrapped the character up really nicely. I, I really enjoyed it. I felt that I started to learn, you know, English actors have a different way of looking at things. Um, from the, I mean, I say the giddy heights of Shorten Street, but at the time it kind of was. You know, there wasn't much else on on TV, really, and um, they were very humble over there. Obviously, the the, the English uh, scene is so much more, is so bigger that actors, I don't know, they they just seemed larger than life. You know. Um, and I, I, I learned a lot, I really enjoyed it. Um, the producers didn't want me to sound Kiwi, so I had to tone that down. So I went and got a voice coach uh, who took me through the ropes, you know, for a couple of weeks. And yeah, um, I did my best. I think I still sound Kiwi. It's hard to lose. It's a really hard accent to lose. Um, and yeah, I don't know. He was a, he was a football agent ma a manager. Um, he was a nasty character as well. Seems like I'm always getting typecast in nasty character roles. I went into that uh, feeling with a little bit of nervousness. I didn't quite know what to expect. It's a reality TV show, so, you know, you, it's just you. It's not like you've got a character to hide behind. Uh, and I'm not really naturally a very uh, extroverted person, you know. I think maybe in the company of people I know, I'll, I'll be a bit more outspoken. But when you put me in an environment where it's a lot of big personalities, I'll probably tend to shrink a little bit towards the back, um, which isn't really, I don't think, what they want on that show. You know, I think they want dramatic stuff to happen. 
and I was quite quiet. Um, but it was, it was, I actually really enjoyed it, you know. I was, there was Michael Laws was on the show as well as Ewan Gilmore uh, and I formed quite a good friendship with those two. Um, and Jason Gunn, obviously hilariously funny person, uh, Mark Ellis and, and Matthew Ridge. Um, and it was good fun, you know. The, 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 the games that we played were not up to the kind of level of some of the overseas shows where, you know, the, the much more involved or complicated, whereas ours were just like, oh, look, there's a palm tree. Why don't you go and climb that and see how high you can go? <laughs> and so you, of course, get to the top of it and, and you're like, right, now if I fall, I'll die. Because, you know, there's no net or anything. Um, yeah, that was good. I came second. I felt um, quite excited about the audition. I was like, wow, I actually get to, to audition in front of this American director um, and went in, auditioned, and, and I did quite a good job. And he told me to stay. He said, oh, don't go home. Just stay, and, and here's another script that we'll just give you now. Learn this and, and do it. Um, so I did. And somehow, I, I think it must have been the Shortland Street days have given me really good... Uh, line learning skills because I just picked the script up, learnt it, bam, went back in, delivered it, and he was like, "Great, cool, okay, nice," and I got the part um, of this sort of agent, like the head of the kind of CIA type environment, um, and I was in about three or four scenes, none of them with Shannon Doherty, which I was really gutted about because I really, you know, you know, I was only in the film with her. That was also that was all blue screen stuff, green screen stuff where, you know, that we went into this warehouse, it was just this disgusting, filthy warehouse, and they were like, this is the CIA headquarters. Yeah, and you're like, okay, right. I can, I can really see what you guys have done here, it's great. Um, and uh, they stick up a green thing up, and they put a desk here, and they go, right, you know, here's your monitor, and this, and you had to sort of, it was very, it was actually quite technical, that, that, that experience, they're like, the director goes, okay, like the performance, rather, I, th I don't care about the performances, whatever, but can you make sure that you walk uh, from here around this desk uh, and then banana in that way and stop on that point there and just lean slightly to the left and deliver your line? Because I think they've got this other dude who kind of mocks, marks it all up and is like, you know, they're going to, everything's going to be chucked into it. So you've got to walk around stuff that's not there. But, yeah. That was, that was awkward. Leading to the Seeker, yeah, I mean, I auditioned, um, role of a, a priest, uh, and, um, and got it. And, yeah, it was completely different again from anything I've done. I've never done anything in the fantasy realm or anything like that before. Um, so it was a lot of, like, you know, big sets and a lot of money thrown at these things and cranes and, and uh, three or four assistants wherever you went, you know, telling you to, this is the way for lunch, and here you go, here's your, I had a, a, kind of a camper van that I shared with a few other people, but, you know, it was kind of like almost what it might be like on a, a big, you know, Hollywood set. I think the clincher, um, or the, the one thing that stood out in that show for me, I had to get my head shaved completely, um, because I was playing, oh, he was a monk rather than a priest, and had a tattoo on the back of my head. Um, and Michael, I remember, he called me up and he said, you know, you're going to get your head shaved because uh, we can put your kind of a cap on you and you can, can do it that way. And I was like, no, 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 I'll get my head shaved. So, yeah, got my number one or number zero. Auckland Days, um, yeah, because so, so Millie, Mill and Beard, who I, I really like, I think he's, he's great talent, you know, and Kyle and Kerry, who are, are good friends, um, and Fussy brought together like a really good team of people and wrote this comedy which I think is just hilarious you know made me laugh and I don't I haven't seen a lot of New Zealand shows um, or comedies that have really made me laugh like that um, and they, they did a great job um, it was quite weird playing yourself you know because I'm not a casting director but yeah I really enjoyed it I thought and, and also the way that, that it was directed was quite loose and they were open to suggestion and having people bring in their own ideas um, on the day, which was really nice, you know, that you weren't bound to a script so, so, so carefully. Um, and it, yeah, really funny.